If we go back a few hundred years in time, the way in which the oceans move and circulate was pretty much unknown. We knew almost nothing about um, ocean circulation. And early explorers and early navigators crossing the major oceans you know, on voyages of exploration and subsequently trading also knew very little. Everything was um, understood by observation and handed down, um, um, was not documented. And it was only when people started recording information in ships' logs that we began to understand a little bit more about how the oceans move on a big scale, on a planetary scale. And those early attempts were collated into crude maps of the way in which the o ocean moves, the way in which the water in the ocean circulates. And what began to become clear was that the oceans are in constant motion, on a big scale. These are um, ocean currents are on a scale vastly greater than, than rivers. These are huge masses of water moving around the planet. And if we jump forward in time to the present day, we now have very sophisticated tools to understand and measure, and ultimately to be able to predict those ocean currents. We have satellites, and from, from space we can actually see surface ocean currents and, and, and monitor them on a continuous basis. And then we have lots of instruments in the ocean that make continuous measurements that give us the capacity to understand how that water is moving around the planet. And this is very, very important in the context of climate because it's the oceans that absorb most of the heat that the planet has taken up in excess of its normal um, radiation balance. And that excess heat, something like 80% of the additional heat that the planet has absorbed, has a fundamental effect on the way in which the oceans circulate and in turn the way in which the oceans drive um, planetary weather and ultimately long-term changes in climate. Because it's in the oceans where around about half of the heat um, that is moved around the planet is moved by the ocean currents from the equators towards the pole, or towards the two poles. And that's setting up circulation systems, rotating gyre systems, um, which move that heat around. And because there's more heat in the oceans and it's not evenly distributed, that has an effect on changes in weather patterns. If you think about a hurricane, hurricanes pick up their energy from the ocean. All the heat in the surface part of the ocean is what makes hurricanes work. It's what drives them and it's how they increase in intensity. So if we have more heat in the surface ocean, that has profound effects on those storm systems. And not just hurricanes and cyclones, but storm systems further north 